Welcome everyone to another episode of the FIFA 23 Heart of the Pool United Road to Glory. Last episode, we had a lot of success. However, we were currently under scrutiny of the board, but hopefully that will be different today. Finished second in the league, got promoted, did decently well in the cups for considering where we were. As you can see in the top left, job is pretty much under fire currently. But with this team, us now being up in the championship, I think we might be able to go back to back with a new goalkeeper. Other than that, I don't think there's any immediate drastic improvements that need to be made. But like I said, three days into the new season, already being informed that the my job is under scrutiny. To help that, we will be signing Paxton Aronson, the American from the free agents list. He's a 77 overall, just something to you know spruce up that midfield a little bit added a different wrinkle to the offense. Fruit Rootley has been sold to FC Porto for $14.5 million. Afonso Cabral has been sold to Burnley for $5.3 million. Coit Sar, player I never never really just caught on, sold for almost $20 million. Solomon Mohamed, one of our better attacking players, sold for $70.5 million. Definitely a player I didn't really want to see go, but that is way too much money to pass up. Joining the team is Fad al Katani, the Iranian striker, 72 overall. I only signed him because Bayern Munich were looking at him. Kind of regret signing him, but he's got a little bit of potential, so we'll see. Issa Kabore, pretty much FIFA crew mode staple at right back. From the free agents list, 83 overall. It's I, I think I signed him. I haven't posted all the series, but I think I signed him in half the series that I do. Also, same goes for Ryan Sessegnon. Left wing back, 25.5k wage, 82 overall, so we've got our new outside backs for the series. Liviu Radu has been going on a half-year loan move to Benfica over in Portugal. Denis Popov, two years to Monza in Italy. Gabriel Elliott, two years to Ososana in Spain. Youth Academy, going to get some Greek attackers, so some Albanian players, and some Turkish wingers. Lubos Novak on a two-year loan move to Rosenborg. Rob Young on a two-year loan move to Gil Vicente. From the Youth Academy will be joining the team will be Philip Novak, Slovakian left winger, 5'10, good dribbler, so that's at least something to get him into the team. Camille Novak from Slovakia as well, this time a left back. Pretty good defender, just high potential in 87 and 93, so we'll have to see what he turns out to be. And halfway through, we are two points off of a playoff spot, so even though we are in ninth, we're very much in the race, so feel very good about where we are. And joining the team from the free agents list is Wojciech Szczesny. I didn't want to sign him because we are in the championship right away, but still a free agent halfway through the year. 84 overall, he's 37 years old, only on 20k wage. I feel like this is a very good player to be adding to this team and kind of the last piece we're missing at that goalkeeper position. Jerry Novak sold to Sassuolo. Camille Novak, two-year loan move to Austin FC over in the MLS. Andre Novak to a team in Norway I can't pronounce. Ladislav Kadlec to Kristensen over in Norway. And now it's time for our first game of the episode as we host Everton in the fourth round of the FA Cup. This is the new and improved starting lineup. We no longer have Mohamed, instead Christia has been moved to that left wing position. Chesney's in goal, for out the first game with the outside backs. Should be a good game for us. Here are the highlights.
So we did lose this game, 4-2. We're definitely not at the level of Premier League teams yet, but we were at least able to hang in there decently. Paxton Aronson have loaned out to Aston Villa, as I just haven't found a way to use him in the team. Gashi is joining the team from the free, from the Youth Academy. Decent potential to see if he ever becomes anything for us. Tim goes for Andres Harris and Filippos Papa. And here we are with five games to go in the season. We are currently second in the table, one point ahead of third and fourth, three points ahead of fifth and sixth. All we have to do is match the results of Norwich and Crystal Palace, and we theoretically should go up into the Premier League. First game to now, we are hosting Swansea City. Lineup is slightly different, switched from the 4-3-3 false nine to a 4-3-3 defend, but it's the same players playing for us. We'll see if this can get us a better result than that Everton game. Here are the highlights. So we did draw this game 2-2 thanks to a late, late goal from Gandhi to keep us in it. So didn't exactly get the results we wanted. We're now out of a automatic spot. So need to kind of turn things up in these last couple of games. And this time we're hosting Huddersfield. Switch to a 4-4-1-1. Pretty much my default formation for whenever things don't go well. Just switch to this. Al Katani gets a start up top. Al Gandhi's moved more to a center forward role where it really suits him better but just looking for any sort of results here. Here are the highlights. So we won this game 5-2, hat-trick from El, Con El Conti, so really, really starting to, I 
I dig this 4-4-1-1. Crystal Palace also won, so we're still a point behind them. But now we have a big game against Norwich, who... They actually have... They're just below us on the table, so... This could be catastrophic for us if we were to lose this. This game, we're switching, trying out a 4-3-2-1. Just trying to keep things fresh, get the plus players on the field in any way we can. Here are the highlights. We won this game 4-3 as well, really starting to turn things on, as we just need to keep getting these results towards the end here, especially since Crystal Palace just lost their game. So now, they do have a game at hand, but two points ahead, just gotta keep getting these results. And this game's gonna be really, really tough, because Burnley are top of the league. We are at home though, but Burnley are top of the league. Going back to the 4-4-1-1. Hopefully we, this can work for us again. Here are the highlights.
So we won this game 6-3, another amazing performance. Definitely going to stick with this 4-4-1-1 heading forward. We won Manager of the Month for the month of April. Andres Harris going on a tier low move to Tranmere Rovers. And here we are with one game left. Crystal Palace on 82 points, we are on 84 points. If we draw and they don't win by more than two, then we will go up. But, simple answer, just win this game and we can go up. And we're traveling to the Pride Park Stadium to face off against Derby County. We're going with the 4-4-1-1. It's the one formation that has not let us down this year. Hopefully, we can get the results that it has been previously. And if we do, we get back-to-back -back promotions and we're up in the Premier League. Here are the highlights. So we won the game 5-0, clinching our promotion up into the Premier League next year. Historic day for the club, and we got a couple of loan moves here. And Paxton Aronson has been sold for a $15,200,000 profit. Signed as a free agent, I think maybe played 7 total games for us. So, good bit, bit, good bit of business for us, get a little bit more money heading into next year. But yeah, Crystal Palace even drew their game. I know they won their game, so it really didn't matter, but amazing performance from the team. Gomdi and John, top of sisters in the league with 13 and 12. FA Cup knocked out in the fourth round. It happens, doesn't really affect us that much. No one cares about the Carabao Cup. But Al Gomdi really put the team on his back this series, this episode, this season. He also had the team's most goals scored with 23. John had 16, and Al Katani had 10. Very surprising, but all pretty much came at the end of the season. Gomdi also had the most assists on the team, John's second most assists on the team. So it's pretty obvious to tell who the two best players on our team are, but Sesson Young did a very good job from that left back spot as well. No players leaving with expiring contracts, and Al Gomdi is now worth $142.5 million. I really think that's a little bit undervalued, but that number should continue to climb. He does have a $375 million release clause, so I don't know when that will be enacted upon, if it ever is, but need to treasure these moments because one day that could be gone. But still not have won any trophies, but with this team, I think we might next year. I think I'm going to have Christia play as a striker. He pretty much is a striker if you just look at his abilities. He's not really a winger. But I think maybe, maybe a new center mid instead of Peterson or Christia. And... I think that's really the only improvements I would make next year. I don't know how quickly Chesney will start regressing in overall, so that could be another place to make some improvements, but if he stays where he is, I think this will pretty much look like the starting team for this in the P Premier League next season, but I really hope you guys did enjoy this video. Next episode, we will obviously start our stay in the Premier League, see how things kind of go, and hopefully we can... I don't think we're going to get Europe, but I would like to not get relegated first and foremost. So probably make a move or two to make that happen and figure out what that move is. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll see you all in episode seven.